So this is the new ASUS VivoBook S16 OLED for 2024. It's a 16 inch thin and light performance notebook. And the specific model I have here comes with the Core Ultra 7 155H CPU. It retails for about 1 lakh 16,000 rupees for this model, but there are cheaper and more expensive models depending upon uh, which processor you get. And I've been using this uh, laptop as my main device for the last two weeks. And in this video, I wanna share my experience with you guys. If you are a student, a content creator, or a working professional, you know, considering to get a 16 inch laptop like this, or if you're looking at this specific model, I'll talk about everything in this video. Should be a fun one, stick around till the end, and let's get started. Now, as always, I wanna start off this review by talking about the design and build quality. And the S16 OLED has a really simple and sleek design. It reminds me of the original MacBook Air design with the wedge shape towards the front and the slanting taper towards the back. Uh, it's completely made out of metal, like, this feels really solid in the hand and it's 13.9 millimeters in terms of the thickness and 1.5 kilograms in terms of the weight. And for a 16 inch laptop that's completely made out of metal, those are really good numbers. And even though it's a 16 inch screen, uh, it comes in the form factor of a 15.6 inch laptop since the bezels are really thin and everything feels very solid. Like there is no flex on the top panel, little to no flex on the bottom panel as well. Uh, the display assembly is also, you know, pretty well put together, it feels pretty solid. There is significant wobble on the display itself. So yeah, that's something I wanted to mention. It's not a touch screen, so I don't think it's gonna be a deal breaker. And the hinge felt pretty decent as well. Like I've seen better hinges from Asus, but this laptop does pass the, you know, one finger lift test. Like the bottom does not lift up. You can open it up pretty easily with one hand no issues and yeah it does have the 180 degree ergo uh, lift hinge so it does go completely flat i don't know what you know people would use this for but it's there if you want to and overall uh, the design and build quality on the s16 oled you know felt nice i have this in the uh, blue mist color but there is a black color available as well this is fine like it's a neutral color i have no opinions uh, i prefer black laptops but this is also pretty good looking. Looks actually very premium in different lighting conditions. And yeah, it doesn't attract fingerprints that easily. And even if it does, it doesn't show them very easily. So fingerprints and smudges aren't very evident. So that's an advantage. And it's very easy to carry around, very thin and light. So you can put it in your bag and you know completely forget about it. So yeah, design and build quality is a thumbs up from my side. Now talking about ports on the S16 OLED, on the left side, you have a full-size HDMI 2.1 port. Next to that are two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, these support power delivery as well as display output. So you can charge the laptop as well as connect displays to it. These also have really fast data transfers. So if you're connecting you know, SSDs and stuff, these are good for that. You also have a micro SD card reader here. Now. I appreciate ASUS including this, but this is a performance notebook. And personally, I like to edit photos and videos on my laptop. So I would like to see a full-size SD card reader like their ZenBook series has. But again, there is something here. Uh, you also have a headphone jack, which is a combo jack, so you can connect microphones as well as uh, headphones to it. And on the right side, you have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports, and there's also the power LED. And in terms of IO, I think this is pretty decent. Apart from the uh, full-size SD card reader, I have no complaints. Now talking about the air intakes and exhaust on this laptop, I really like how Asus has approached the thermal design here. So you have a single air intake here with a bunch of grills that's gonna take in cool air from the environment. And the exhaust is on the back. So both the right and left side are completely clean. And this has a few advantages. One, it makes the laptop you know, look very clean and aesthetically pleasing, but Let's say you're using this laptop with a mouse, you're not gonna have hot air blow on your right hand, which can get annoying sometimes. So I really like this change. Now talking about the keyboard and trackpad experience, first of all, I really like the color of this keyboard and it's a full size layout. So you have a numpad as well, but the keys on the numpad are smaller compared to the rest of the keyboard and typing experience was fine. Like you've got good, you know, travel, decent feedback. The keys are large enough in size, except the numpad and one thing I don't like about this keyboard is the small arrow keys. You have to do a lot of finger gymnastics to get used to it, especially if you have big hands. Uh, but overall, the spacing in between the keys is adequate enough so you don't make errors while typing. And this is a RGB keyboard, so you can customize the effect as well as the color 
of the backlight. And there's three brightness levels, which you can change uh, from right here, from the function row, there's a shortcut. But if you want to do, you know, detailed changes, you can go into Windows's personalization settings. There is dynamic lighting. You can, you know, change effects there, breathing, fixed, solid color, rainbow, whatever you want. And you can pick basically any color on the spectrum, which is really nice. Uh, I did not expect Asus to give a, you know, RGB backlit keyboard on a work-oriented laptop, but it's good to have. And yeah, you have the function row and the shortcuts merged together. So if you want to use the regular F1 to F12 functions, you'll have to, you know, use the FN key. But otherwise, you'll be able to do, you know, basic things like volume up, volume down, brightness, media controls and stuff like that, which is good. Now talking about the trackpad, it's really huge. It's 15 centimeters by 10 centimeters in terms of the dimensions. And it's a very nice, smooth surface. I'm not sure if it's glass, but it tracks really well. Very precise, very accurate, supports all the gestures and stuff. Another thing I like about the trackpad is the silent click so you're not gonna annoy uh, anyone around you if you're working in a cafe or a office environment so yeah that's really nice now since this is an Intel Evo laptop you also have a full HD IR webcam here with a physical privacy shutter so you can close it up if you're not using the webcam to protect your online privacy and yeah you can use this webcam to sign into the laptop using Windows hello and here is a webcam test for you guys Here's a webcam test of the ASUS VivoBook S16 OLED. This is how the video looks from the Full HD webcam. Uh, you're also listening to the audio from the laptop's internal microphone array. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the video quality and the audio quality. I think it's pretty good. Like it's able to handle exposure really well and it's really good quality and will get the job done for online meetings and Zoom calls and stuff like that. There's also AI noise cancellation. So if you know there's a lot of stuff going on in your background, you'll try to cut down on that. And there are some extra features. So if you, you know, press on the top right here, uh, you have automatic framing as well as eye contact and background blur and you have two modes of background blur there's standard and portrait I personally prefer portrait because it looks more natural and all of this you know background blur and framing is handled by the NPU which is the neural processing unit and it's using Intel's AI boost technology and that's the webcam test now talking about the speakers, the S16 OLED has two bottom firing speakers that are tuned by Harman Kardon and these are Dolby Atmos certified. Now the speakers get really loud and they're very clear. The sound is very rich but it does lack bass. So if you're listening to podcasts or watching movies or listening to music that has a lot of vocals in it, that's going to sound really clear and it does get loud so you can you know sit by yourself in a room and enjoy a movie or a YouTube video and you're not going to have any issues. But as I said, it does lag bass. And here is a speaker test for you guys. Get ready for some numbers and specs cause we're gonna be talking about the display. It's one of the highlights of the S16 OLED. So you've got a 16 inch 3.2K OLED display with 120 Hz refresh rate and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's Pantone validated, Dolby Vision certified, a million is to one contrast ratio, 600 nits of peak brightness, and it also supports uh, display HDR True Black 600. It's a glossy panel, so everything has a pop to it and text and images look really sharp, really crisp. And one of the disadvantages of matte panels is that they kind of blur your content, take away from the sharpness and make everything look kind of washed out. But with glossy panels, you have one disadvantage. You get reflections, but everything has a punch to it, which is really nice. And the bezels on this display are really thin, especially the side bezels. And since this is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, you've got extra vertical real estate. So you're gonna see more content when you're scrolling through web pages and documents, which can help with productivity. And overall, using this display was a lot of fun. It was a treat to use, uh, playing games, watching videos, watching movies. If you like to consume content, if you like watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube videos, this is a laptop to get. You have really decent speakers and that display just makes for a really good media viewing experience. And since this is a 120 Hertz panel, scrolling is also a lot of fun. It's very smooth. And yeah, overall, I had no issues like the deep blacks, it gets plenty bright for indoor usage. You could also use it you know, in an environment where there's a lot of light, so office or cafes, but I wouldn't recommend using this outdoors. And yeah, the display is a really good one. Now let's talk performance. So the specific model I have here comes with the Core Ultra 7 155H CPU, but you can get a Core Ultra 5 and Ultra 9 variant as well. The 155H has 
16 cores and 22 threads, out of which six are performance cores, eight are efficiency cores, and two are low power efficiency cores. You've got a boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz and 24 megabytes of cache. And the base clock on the performance cores is 1.4 gigahertz, which makes this chip really efficient. And I really like this about the new Core Ultra series chips. If you're not using the laptop at its full potential, it's gonna save battery by using the efficiency cores. If you're just doing email browsing, you know, just low power tasks, you're gonna save battery. You also have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM at 7467 megahertz, and this is onboard memory. It's soldered, so you can't really upgrade it later. So get as much RAM as you want when you're buying this laptop. You also have a terabyte of PCI Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD here, which can be upgraded you know, from ASUS or later on by yourself. And the read and write speeds from this drive were very decent. I had 5,000 megabytes per second read and 3,500 write, which lines up with the other laptops in the market. You also have Intel Arc graphics here and a 75 watt hour battery. Now, those are just paper specs. And I always tell you that benchmarks and specifications don't tell you the full story. But starting with my performance testing, I did run some synthetic benchmarks, so Geekbench 6, as well as uh, Cinebench 2024, and the results were very surprising. This Core Ultra 7 15205H comes very close to the Ultra 9 185H CPU, which I've tried in the past. So single core scores, multi-core scores were very close by, and the ARC graphics in here also perform very close to the Ultra 9's ARC graphics. So you're getting really good performance and all of that translates to really good real world performance as well. So if you're doing everyday general productivity, email, browsing, you know, just scrolling through web pages, watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, it flies through that, no issues. It's very fast and multitasking is also very good on the laptop. So you can switch between apps, you can have a bunch of tabs open in Chrome or Microsoft Edge and the laptop did not break a sweat. There were no hiccups. Now for some demanding tasks, even though this is not a gaming laptop, I did try Valorant here and it was on high settings at 1080p and I was getting really respectable frame rates, 180 to 200 average FPS without a dedicated graphics card. And I also did my usual video editing test and here are the numbers. So I started off with a five minute clip from the Canon R6 Mark II 4K, 60 FPS, 10 bit, 422. Uh, and this was rendered at 150 megabytes per second. And the laptop took three minutes and 48 seconds to render that five minute clip. Next up, I tried a 1080p clip from the Canon ATD shot at 50 megabytes per second. And the laptop was able to do it in one minute, two seconds. And that was a five minute clip. It just flies through 1080p footage. Now moving on, I tried a five minute clip from the Sony A7S III shot at 4K, 10 bit, 422 and this was rendered at 240 megabytes per second and the laptop took 8 minutes 32 seconds to render that 5 minute clip. Now for a laptop that does not have a dedicated GPU, those are some really good numbers in terms of video editing. So the video editing performance of this laptop is pretty good and I was really impressed uh, with those results and you have one more advantage that 16 inch OLED display. This covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color space. It's a very color accurate panel. So if you are doing color sensitive work, like you know color grading, color correcting footage in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, if you're using Photoshop or Lightroom to you know color correct photos, all of that can be done very easily. And you can switch between different color spaces. So sRGB and Adobe RGB, depending upon your workflow using the My Asus app. So those are some really good features for video editors and content creators. And yeah, overall performance was really good, but that performance comes at a cost and that is the thermals on this laptop. Now it does not thermal throttle, so you're not losing out on performance, but the laptop does get really hot and really loud uh, when under full load. So I did my thermal testing and at idle, I get about 40 degrees Celsius when the laptop is doing nothing. So in the silent or whisper mode, but let's say you start pushing the laptop and you put some load on it. I played a full game of Valorant, edited some videos in Premiere Pro and the laptop was hovering around 65 to 75 degrees Celsius. But let's say you start rendering videos or you run benchmarking software like Cinebench R2024, it does get hot. It starts going up to that 80, 85 degree range. And in my Prime 95 stress test, I was able to push this laptop to 96 degrees Celsius max temperature. Now, don't worry, you're not gonna get, um, you know, 96 degrees in your everyday usage, but yes, this laptop can get hot. Now, the thermals are managed really well, but the fan gets really loud. And here is a, you know, sound test of the fan.
So that's the sound test and just know that this laptop can get loud and people around you will be able to hear it. Uh, so there is a full speed uh, performance mode in the My Asus app. It's gonna give you really good performance, but it does you know, crank up the temperatures as well. But I would recommend using the laptop on standard or performance mode if you want the temperatures to be in control. But other than that, I have no issues with the performance. Now talking about battery life, uh, on the S16 OLED, you get a 75 watt hour battery and a 90 watt uh, USB Type-C brick is included in the box, but you could use any power brick. You could use your smartphone's charger if it's big enough, or you could use a power bank that supports power delivery to charge this laptop, and it does support fast charging. Now talking about battery life numbers, I was able to get 10 to 12 hours of battery life without any issues. And on a good day, you could push it through 13, but it's gonna depend on the display brightness and let me tell you, you're not gonna be using this display at 100% brightness. It gets really bright. It can get uncomfortable to use sometimes. So let's say you're using it 50 to 80% brightness, you are gonna get really good battery life. And the processor inside here is very efficient. And if you set it to the standard or performance mode, I don't think you should worry about battery life. It's gonna last you all day long, whether you are a content creator, a student or a working professional, you can get through class, you can get through a day of office, without any issues. And since it has fast charging, you'll be able to top it up really quickly as well. Now, since the VivoBook S16 OLED is a Intel Evo certified laptop, you have basic features like instant wake. So let's say you lift up the lid, the laptop screen should come up in like one or two seconds. You have a full HD 1080p webcam, you have fast connectivity. So Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. I had no issues using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Like even on wireless, I was getting really good speeds. So you covered there and you have Thunderbolt ports. I'll leave a link down below to Intel Evo. There's a bunch of requirements. It's all good stuff for working professionals and students. So don't worry about that. And yeah, overall, the VivoBook S16 OLED is nice. Like talking about software, you get Windows 11 uh, pre-installed out of the box. There's not a lot of bloatware, but there is some ASUS apps, like their proprietary software, which is useful. But there's also McAfee antivirus, which you can get rid of if you wanted to. Uh, there's also Microsoft Office included, so you get a free subscription. And there you have it. Those are my two cents on the VivoBook S16 OLED for 2024. Is this a good laptop? Yes. Should you buy it? Definitely. If you're in the market for a premium, thin light performance notebook and your budget is around 1 lakh to 1 lakh 20 thousand rupees you can go for this this is a really good option it does all the fundamentals right uh, summarizing my review the good stuff is that it has a really nice display thin and light you can take it around very easily good performance good battery life decent trackpad and keyboard overall it's a really nice laptop. Things that can be improved in the future is the speaker lags base, so that can be improved. The fan noise is very loud. Maybe they can reduce that. And the laptop gets hot, so maybe cut down on the temperatures, you know, do something with the thermal design. But the overall value proposition of this laptop is really good. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this video helpful in any way or enjoyed it, do drop a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss out on future uploads. And I'll also drop links uh, if you're thinking about buying this laptop, all the different variants. Do buy from my links, it helps the channel out and in turn help me make more videos. If you have any questions or queries, do leave them in the comment section down below. Also let me know what you guys think about the S16 OLED. I'll be there in the comment section hanging out with you guys. And that's that. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.